Every day in Britain, 100 people become a victim of fraud shopping online. Thank you for contacting Action Fraud. I've been scammed out of £5,500. Organised crime is now targeting the world's biggest site. Anyone that uses eBay is targeted by these people. They have multiple hundreds of accounts and effectively they're taking hundreds of thousands of pounds per week. Across Britain, thousands of victims have lost their life savings. The money was everything. That's all I could afford. But it was knowing that they've taken my dream away from me. Tonight, detectives go after a gang making millions. We've targeted the top end and we're taking out the main characters. Police! We're under arrest on suspicion of being involved in fraud and money laundering offences. You see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of passports, national identity cards. Police operation. We're under arrest on suspicion of being involved in fraud. The money has been funding a luxury lifestyle. Hermes, more Gucci. How many handbags do you need? And fueling other crime. It's a house that's got a purpose, and we're pretty sure that it's, it's to use as a brothel. Oh, we got some drugs. We've got a rock of something, and we've got some powder. A Class A drug has been found in an address that you've been linked to. Oh my God. I don't know. Contacting Action Fraud. How can I help you today? I've been scammed out of five thousand five hundred pounds through eBay. It was a vehicle that we were purchasing. Supposed to be delivered this Saturday, wasn't. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling Action Fraud. They said they were going to deliver the vehicle for a seven-day inspection. And how much were you to pay for it? Seven thousand five hundred. Four thousand three hundred. I don't know what to do next, really. It's just thoroughly disappointing. Yeah. A task force of detectives from the City of London, Metropolitan and British Transport Police are working with the National Crime Agency to investigate a new multi-million pound fraud targeting thousands of eBay customers. My name's David Strange. I left a message on your phone earlier. I'm from the London Regional Fraud Team. I'm just giving you a call about the, the eBay fraud that you reported. So you've not heard anything from them since and you don't have your van? As far as you were concerned, you were working on a, on a secure eBay platform. Well, it's not going to be much consolation to you, but you're, you're one of many, unfortunately, um, who found themselves in, in this position. Take care now. Oh dear, another three and a half thousand pounds. Um, fallen victim. Absolutely sucked in. No idea that it's not eBay that she's communicating through. The victim's gone online, has done the sale through what they think is eBay. And when the suspect comes back and says, yeah, we've got your money, thank you very much, we'll arrange the delivery on Thursday, no show. We'll arrange the arrange delivery on Saturday, no show. And to the point where the victim realises that, that they're not getting what they've asked for. Detectives have intelligence from the National Crime Agency that a gang are making millions from this new online crime. This criminal gang are offering cars, vans for sale on eBay that don't exist. They lure you in to make the purchase by sending false emails purporting to be from PayPal. It's a copy-paste. Using eBay's logo, it's a copy-paste. Within the email, we'll have a bank account for payment, purporting to be the holding account, that is the fraudster's account. They have multiple hundreds of accounts on eBay. And effectively, they're taking hundreds of thousands of pounds per week.
The gang direct victims away from eBay and PayPal, fooling them to pay into accounts they control. Detectives have placed the gang under surveillance. They are controlled by a man known as the General. They definitely do not have any consideration for the victims whatsoever. They do not care whether it's a retired couple, a young professional struggling to save the money. They want getting as much money as they can as quickly as they can. Pescu's out and about. Yeah, he's going normal way. He's heading towards London, mate. Stand by. Subject two, out and left. That's the Pescu. He's the main organiser. He's the one who controls everything. The money goes to him. He's known as the general. He's got his lieutenants working for him. They'll be followed off today as well. Looking at two million pounds of victims' money that we believe this group have taken. She is the girlfriend of a pescue. In quite a short space of time, we've got her going into nine different banks and opening up bank accounts using nine different names and IDs. She's quite young, so going into to the banks, she's not going to raise suspicion. The gang from Romania have targeted hundreds of victims across Britain. We're going to see a victim who engaged with the criminals that we're looking into. She was duped into parting with about £4,000 uh, in thinking that she was buying a van. It just makes you so angry when you see how much they're actually taking from people. Brazilian-born Joyce Toshio went onto eBay to buy a van for her husband, a delivery driver. When you say from eBay, one of the things I wanted to clarify with you was who you thought you'd been communicating with. The Pescu's gang sent Joyce dozens of emails, fooling her into believing she was buying the van from a respectable professional called Maria. She explained that she were a doctor mm -hmm. and she were busy at work so she, uh, I couldn't go there to to see the van. So she will arrange a transport to my home and I will have three days to inspect the van and see if I liked or not. She said that the transaction will go through by eBay. Thursday morning when the van supposed to be in my home, they sent me email saying that they had transporting shoes and the van could not be delivering that day so they moved to the next day. I wait all day next day and they didn't deliver the van. It may or may not come as a surprise. This email won't have actually come from eBay. They've named it eBay but it's not actually an eBay page and that's that's the hook that they're using to catch so many people out. I think that things like this could not happen to me, especially here in England. We work hard to get this money and some people come and take it like like it's nothing. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I still feel very upset and for, for myself as well because I didn't realize it was a fraud. Joyce has no chance of getting her £4,000 back. The money has gone into an account set up and controlled by Popescu. But the net is closing in on the gang and two of its key lieutenants. This is Close Circuit TV from Barclays at Finchley Road and what you have is you've got um, Churchill Aru. Interestingly, it is now Kalastrashi. As soon as 
The member of public has moved their money into the PayPal holding account. They will be looking to withdraw the money as quickly as possible. You've got Kalash Rush, who's just been to one ATM machine, and then he's gone through to another ATM machine. And he's now cashing out. He's um, trying to uh, get as much money out as he can. For every victim the gang target, they open up a new account using false identity documents. The more accounts that are opened, the more victims can be approached to put their money in these accounts for them to withdraw the cash. The victim's money is then delivered by the gang's two lieutenants to the general, Madeleine Papescu. He keeps himself away from the action in the sense that Kalistrash and Churchill are the ones going into the banks. He doesn't get his hands dirty. The London Regional Fraud Team are investigating a Romanian gang stealing millions from eBay customers. Anyone that uses eBay is targeted by these people. There is no specifics about age, gender, race. No matter how much money you do or don't have to spend, they'll take whatever you've got. I recently lost my wife to cancer. I was hoping that buying a motorhome would enable me to have more freedom to visit family and friends. The stress of losing my wife and then two thirds of my savings was extremely traumatic. I find it's shaken my faith in humanity and my trust in others. And that, I mean, any of them. Um, and they all, they all come out with such similar things. It's really quite an upsetting mood. Um, but it certainly motivates you to do your job properly. Fifty-year-old single parent, Mandy Larder, is one of thousands of victims who have fallen for this type of fraud. Always wanted a camper van, so when I was in my early 20s, I started saving and um, just whatever I could at the time. I was told that it was a bank to bank transfer. Everything seemed so genuine, I didn't think twice about it. When I transferred the money, I was over the moon. I was absolutely giddy. I was, um, this was my dream come true. It really was. Up until the Sunday, I was clock watching, expecting her to turn up. But she just didn't. They haven't just taken my money, they've taken something that I've wanted since I was 12 years old. It wasn't, you know, the money was hard enough to save. The money was, was you know, everything. That's all I could afford. But it was knowing that they've taken my dream away from me. Detectives have traced the victim's money to hundreds of accounts held by Romanian nationals. Neil Barnes and John Adams believe gang lieutenant Christine Calastrashi coordinates the setup of this international money laundering network. Calastrash is very, very busy. Um, he regularly goes to the uh, airport, which is always Luton Airport, where they collect the. Um, the mules from. Um, when we say mules, we mean um, people who are actually being brought into this country for the sole purpose of opening bank accounts using fake ID documentation uh, for the money to then be paid into those accounts. seems to be a regular route that this group use. 
we can use CCTV from the airport to support the fact that these people uh, are coming through the borders. Third exit, airport way. If I tell you, drop your camera, drop your camera. Two money mules are seen arriving off a flight from Bucharest. You've got Kalastrashi, one of our main uh, people in the organised crime group, with two new people. They're going to be taken back to London and taken straight to banks. They all have a, a hotel where, where they put the, the mules into for a couple of days before they, they then return to, um, to Eastern Europe. Kalastrashi takes the money mules to a bank in Paddington. They are joined by another lieutenant, Mihai Churchalaru. Churchill is on the scene now. He's working with Kalastrashi into making sure uh, everything's working well. If there is language difficulties, he will act as a translator and that, and the staff will be grateful for that. And he will have the documentation ready, utility bills, correct identification, council tax, and uh, ref references from jobs. It's now to see where they go, uh, where they go next. Kalastrashi and Churchillaru take the men to a second bank, then a third, and then a fourth. The scary thing about this is, is um, this is one day. There's no fear factor for them because they don't think they're going to get caught. They find people to fly into the UK from Eastern Europe to open fraudulent bank accounts, to have their IDs exploited. This is fraud as well as identity crime, as well as organised crime. Every day, the gang attract to a set of private apartments in North London. We've got footage here of Pescu outside. Kalastrashi is also with a group now. It's all very relaxed and they all, they all seem to know each other very well. Subject seven is now cuddling Pescue. It would point in the direction that they are in some sort of relationship. She's fallen for the charm of Mr. Pescu and has got herself caught up in crime. The wife is probably completely oblivious to this separate part of his life, and I'm pretty sure Mr. Pescu would do everything in his power to make sure that she never finds out. The team now feel they have enough evidence to arrest the organised crime gang, known as an OCG. We've got an awful lot of people connected to this group. We have, we have targeted the top end of this OCG and we're taking out the main characters. This gentleman is the key subject of our inquiry, Madeline Popescu, the head of this OCG. Subject seven, unknown female. We believe she lives at Heritage Avenue in one of the flat blocks there. Address D is the home address of Kalistrashi. Again, he's linked to so so many victim accounts. Mr. Dragishi, Mr. Churchill Ali as well. Detectives have also identified the gang's headquarters. This address is one that the OCG have used frequently. They come from banks having cashed out victim accounts and they take the money there. Essentially, the only people who go in and out of that door every day are our baddies. I'm going to hold back from saying an ID factory and hope that we find one. 
it is really important that we arrest everyone at the same time in this case. If one gets wind that another's been arrested and we're not behind them to arrest them at the same time, with their access to false identities, there is no doubt that they will flee the country. The National Crime Agency are supporting the arrest operation. It is a very sophisticated gang. It's operating across the international borders. It's using fake identity documents and several layers of uh, operators to make sure that those that benefit from the crime and masterminding it are outside of uh, law enforcement's reach. One hundred and fifty officers will raid seven different properties across London and Hertfordshire. The surveillance teams are plotted up outside their addresses at the moment. They'll be given a, a running commentary of what's happening uh, when our baddies move off, and um, we're just going to decide how long to let them run for um, before they make the arrest. Subject 2 is on the move with subject 7 in the car. Moving to strike on close street. Here we go. Detectives from the London Regional Fraud Team are about to arrest a Romanian gang involved in a multi-million pound eBay fraud. One male, one female entered in under arrest tonight. I've posited the of Tesco yellow t-shirt and trousers. I've posited the of subject seven in the dark jacket. They're going to take it when they come out of the premises because the likelihood is they're, they're going to have some evidence packs on them. That's contact subject two, subject seven, subject five. They're all together. Well, that'd be a good stop. She just said two, five, and seven together, didn't she? Yeah. Let's get them in that car, park them up somewhere, yeah. take them out. Right. Get the teams in place, take the strike. Three zero, That's brilliant. He's out. <laughs> It's going to get arrested. Right, go. Operation. So you're going to be arrested, conspiracy to defraud and money laundering. Detectives have caught the gang's general, Papescu, <laughs> one of his lieutenants, Dragici. You're under arrest for the best thing you can do now is, is just not say anything, OK? And his girlfriend. I'm arresting you on suspicion of conspiracy to defraud and money laundering between October last year and the present day. She had a quantity of cash in the bag. She says it's her birthday and that she was going out shopping to uh, buy a dress. I'm going to go to a police station and then we'll be interviewing you. All right, you understand that? Yeah. Okay, how good are you English? Okay, not bad. Yeah. For what? For what? Fraud uh, and money laundering. OK, and that's why you've been cautioned. Cheers, guys. Thank you. She's just reading a prayer book. It's probably good for her that she does that. She's um, been part of a criminal organised crime cat. It caused uh, absolute mayhem and grief for a lot of people. So maybe she's feeling guilty. It's been a really good find, really good hit. It was good that they were three were together. 
That's all good evidence. It looks like we've got most of the gang. 500 yards away, Detective John Adams and his team have tracked key Lieutenant Kalastrashi to the gang's headquarters. Life's all about timing. So he's still in now. under arrest on suspicion of being involved in fraud and money laundering offences. You don't have to say anything. They may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you may later on in court. Do you understand? OK. Do not touch anything. Sit here. Can I take my phone? No, you don't no. touch anything. This is what we do, I want you to put your hands together like that for me. I'm going to put some handcuffs on you for the moment, OK? There's a Barclays bank tab, NatWest, Halifax, and I believe that's Santander. And there's multiple emails from various banks in there as well. Oh, OK. OK. I think they might be interested in that. Yeah. In mainly an ID card. Yeah. OK. Like any well-run business, the gang have kept detailed records. This goes on right the way through the folder. Bank cards with details. That's very helpful. Three separate ID cards, Romanian ID cards. One picture, same woman. Three different sets of details. At City of London Police Custody, the final member of the gang, Mihai Churchalaru, has been brought in. Arrested on suspicion of um, defraud and money laundering. Part of the caution was, uh, what is money laundering? He was further arrested on suspicion of fraud by false representation and cautioned. Uh, reply after caution was, yes, it's false. That guy over there made it for me. Uh, what's your job? Catering. Catering? Yes. You say you've been arrested before? Yes, this time the second time. What's your mobile number? I don't know. You don't know your mobile number? Honestly, I don't keep oh, it because no. I have a lot of things. So no, you meet a nice young lady and she says, what's your number? You go, I don't know, and she walks away. No, I take the phone and I give her oh, my okay. phone. OK. She goes, I save you my phone, my number. So you swap them over, yes. OK? Yes. Hello. Speak English? Yeah. Get you to write your, your family name and your first name there, please. So Roxana, Roxana Elena Trusco. And what's your occupation? I'm a personal trainer. OK. Uh, I have a friend with a... Uh, Oh, uh, online store. Online shop, so. Just gonna check your, your waistband. Roxana Truska, the girlfriend of the gang's leader, has nine different aliases. In her bag, detectives find another fake identity card. If it's a fake, it's a good one. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I'm further arresting you, times 13 12, okay, on suspicion of fake identification documents. Toilet's there, everything is private, can't see anything. London, Detective John Adams 
is about to raid a flat rented by the leader, Papescu. Looking like it's the right place to me. Send the dog in. It's loads of toilet trees. Yeah. And um, they've got all moisturisers and all. This is just straightforward knocking shop, this is. The actual apartment is very bare, um, other than that there are petals across every single floor with candles. It's a house that's got a purpose, and we're pretty sure that it's, it's to use as a brothel. The people who are obviously connected to, to this criminality, have, we know they've got no morals from what they've done to the victims, potentially treating um, young girls um, and paying them money for, for sex. Another team have been sent to Watford to search Papescu's family home. Yes, yes, received. Uh, team A making a way to their address. Over. Oh, this one. There's a window. Hi, can I ask you to come downstairs for me, please? We've got a search warrant. Oh, my God. There's a quantity of quite nice high value watches there. Yes, Best four so far. Ah, uh, have a look. All right, there we go. Baby's Armani tracksuit hanging up in the wardrobe. It's all just piled away. Hermes. Another Hermes. More Gucci, all just tucked away, not even being used. How many handbags do you need? Back at City of London Police Custody, detectives have just 24 hours to charge the gang. Because suspected of being involved in conspiracy to defraud members of the public in an online auction scam. Did you understand what he said? Um, that's the reason I want to interpret it because oh, I'm not understanding. I appreciate that. Did you understand any of what he said? A little bit? A little. A little, okay. I'll get an interpreter on the phone. What, uh, what do you do? In the brick lane, did you say? Extension, loft conversion, bath, mm -hmm. kitchen, decorating, okay. plumbing, electricity. All of it. Flooring, general building. General building. You're answering very quickly. I think you understand quite a lot of English. Yeah. Have you been arrested before? Uh, yes. Right. We're going to finish with the interpreter now. You're going to go and spend a little bit of time in the cell. Once he was contained, he was talking in good English. Um, but he's now since come to custody, claiming he doesn't understand English, although he's lived in this country for a few years. This is a delay tactic, but we've got plenty of time, enough evidence to keep them in custody as long as we can do uh, before charge. Detectives are using a Romanian police officer to translate the gang's conversations. And they then started saying about the offence. Uh, she said, we've been arrested for fraud and money laundering. And he said, it's not true, it's not true. But this can be done in October, yes, only though. Roxana is asking her how long she's likely to get in prison and he's shouting back three months because it's only fake ID. So it's all interesting in stuff. Ross! No! No comment! No comment! The 
London Regional Fraud Team are raiding addresses linked to a gang involved in a multi-million pound eBay fraud. Well, you've got his, his three, three separate names. names. Yep. You've got another, got another one here as well. You need to know who you are, because otherwise you're likely to get arrested, OK? <laughs> Try and concentrate on okay. getting your ID, ID getting all your yeah. stuff together, yeah? yeah. OK? Yeah. Yeah. Let's sort that out now. Freeze! Freeze! We've got about uh, 200 to 400 SIM cards all packed up in there. There is a large influx of Romanian nationals coming into country to open up bank accounts to help facilitate the fraud. Yes. At City of London police custody, detectives have only 12 hours left to charge the gang. Your solicitor's here. What? Solicitor. Uh, when we need your lawyer, advocate. <laughs> they believe Roxana, Papescu's girlfriend, could be the gang's weak link. They found six more of her faces on ID, didn't they? So now we've got 15. So when we start <laughs> piling them into her tomorrow, that, 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 you've got right. this ID, you've got well, this that, ID. So so it's just going to break her. She's yeah. taken some reassurance from the brief then by saying, don't worry, don't say anything, yeah. we need to look after you. When we mentioned about duress at, at the very end, yeah, you yeah, mentioned yeah. You, your family, has yeah. anyone put, pressured you to do this? She looked like she was about to break. So, we need to press hold on that, that tomorrow. Thought. Absolutely, press on that tomorrow. See, because I think she's going to have a night in the cell now, isn't she? She's got time to think. Let me go here. Okay? Do you want a drink? Tea, coffee, water? No. You sure? Roxana's flat could hold key evidence of the fraud. Okay, we've got syringes, five of those. Oh, we've got some drugs. We've got a rock of something and we've got some powder. It's heroin and it's probably going to be street value. Over a thousand pounds, getting up to two thousand pounds worth of heroin. There were a few condoms and there were hand sanitizers in there as well. There's not a lot of future in this room, is there? No one's planning. That. No one's planning ahead or looking to what they're doing next week or next year. It's it's all for the moment, and um, she's clearly living and sharing his lifestyle. In a bag on the bed is Papescu's wallet. <laughs> That's all the bank accounts. Booker, Tudor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. You've got the sum there, so I would say that's the amount that's probably gone in. The date and the bank account, and I can see straight away that Florin Tudor is one of our suspect accounts. Um, I recognise a lot of those names, and that links into some of the victims who probably won't see their money again, if I'm honest. The reality is um, a lot of that will have, will have probably left the country by now, by one way or another. So. The evidence against Popescu's girlfriend is stacking up. OK, the officer wants to just speak to you, OK? Hi, uh, do you have me from yesterday? Yeah. Um, I'm Officer Lucas. You're being also arrested on suspicion of being in possession of a Class A drug. Drug? Yes, a Class A drug. It's been found in an address that you've been linked to. Oh, my God. I would say that Popescu looks at looking after her. We've got to make her aware that actually he can't look after you now. You've got to start looking after yourself.
Popescu will now be interviewed about the bank accounts found in the flat. Because you've only got an hour, tell me about that, please. We've got this. Can you yeah. tell me about explain? You'll see a shed load of other stuff for him. Yeah. Are these yours? They're in that bag. We've got this. Can you yeah. tell me about explain? Go not go into the nitty gritty. This is lists of handwritten lists and title lists of amounts with dates and bank accounts. It's close to 100 grand in a one month period. It's nice that he's very organised in maintaining awareness of what monies are going in. So we shall see what he says when we ask him about it. Papescu maintains his silence. But the evidence against him is overwhelming. He is allowed to call his wife before he is charged. Let's not get back into it. I don't know where you come from. 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 Nu am deschis absolut nimic, nu am făcut nimic. Și să nu iți un lucru că sunt nevinovat. Nu e ușor cinci ani. Dumnezeu este bine cu fântezi. She's come out, seen him, tried to kind of, you know, make contact. He's back, totally blanked her. She goes back to the cell with no contact from him, starts sitting in her cell and calling out his name. And now she's in floods of tears. Well, it's, they should have thought about that before they started committing crime, shouldn't they? Okay, Christian, you, I'm going to be charging you with four offences of fraud by false representation. All of the gang are charged with money laundering and fraud. If you're not in my place, if you say to you, I kill your mom, if you don't open for right, me, okay. what are you doing? Why not check me, my family? Right, okay. I've been forced. Why this nobody understands? I don't care about the jail. Relax, my, relax, my daughter relax, is going to be dying. Relax, relax. Nobody cares. Relax, relax. A lot of evidence against you. Over a long period of time. Okay. Okay. I think really deep down they've realised now that they've um, they've been caught and uh, that they're hopefully going to get some quite lengthy uh, custodial sentences. One criminal conduct. This is contrary to section one brackets one of the Criminal Law Act 1977. Papescu's family home will be seized as a criminal asset. We know that the money has been cashed out. It's been spent on lifestyle goods and you're never going to recover that money. Where there's criminal gain, where there's assets to recover, we will go to every extent that we possibly can to recover those assets. If I had one wish, it would be to get every single penny back for those victims. goes to court, all the gang plead guilty to fraud and money laundering. Christian Calastrashi and Florin de Grici received three years, eight months and three years, six months, respectively. Mihai Churchalaru, two years and six months. The drugs charges against Roxana Truska were dropped, but she received three years and eight months for money laundering and fraud. Ringley 
leader Madeleine Papescu was sentenced to five years. Ne vedem pe SDC. Okay.